Hello again. In today's video, I'll show you how to remove a Linux distribution from a dual boot computer without damaging the installed Windows or your data on it. After all, Windows is still the most popular operating system, and in my opinion, you can never go wrong using it. Windows enjoys broad support from software developers, ensuring that almost all popular applications are available for the platform. Windows is widely regarded as the premier gaming platform, with extensive support from game developers and superior compatibility with gaming hardware. For avid gamers, the transition to Windows can offer access to a larger library of games and better performance compared to Linux. Windows remains the dominant desktop operating system globally, resulting in better compatibility with hardware, peripherals, and software services. Windows has Linux compatibility via the WSL subsystem, which provides a middle ground for users who need Linux functionality alongside the familiarity of Windows. The graphical user interface of Windows, along with extensive online support resources, can make it easier for users to diagnose and resolve common issues without delving into command line interfaces or system configurations. Perhaps one of these qualities of Windows is why you want to use only this operating system, so let's get started. I have a dual boot of Windows 11 and Zorin OS 17 on my PC, and I am going to remove Zorin OS. Zorin OS is based on Ubuntu, but this method will work for all Linux distributions. To do this, I have to restart my computer and boot into Windows 11. In Windows File Explorer, we see only the C partition on which Windows is installed. Now right-click on the Start menu and open Windows Disk Manager. In Windows Disk Manager, we can see all the partitions that are on our disk. The first is the EFI boot partition, which is responsible for loading the installed operating systems. Sometimes, when dual booting, it is possible to manually create a second EFI partition. For example, Pop! OS requires an EFI size of at least 1000 MB, and the EFI partition that Windows automatically creates is only 100 MB. Then we have to resize the EFI partition or create a new one during the Linux installation. Anyway, if you have a second EFI partition, you will be able to see it immediately after the Windows C partition. In this case, I have a partition for EFI, partition C of the Windows installation, after that is the partition on which Zorin OS is installed, and the fourth is the Windows recovery partition. To remove Linux, simply right-click on the Zorin OS partition and delete it. You can make a new partition from the free space or extend the C partition. Just right-click on C and select Extend Volume. Follow the next steps and complete the process. Okay, now we only have the partitions we need to use Windows. Close all open windows and programs, restart the computer, and immediately activate the boot menu. If you don't know which button is responsible for activating the boot menu, check your computer's documentation. Most often, this is the F12 button. When the boot menu is displayed, we still see the Zorin OS bootloader. Note that it was set as the first to load, and now we need to change that. To do this, go to the BIOS and look for the boot priority settings there. Set Windows Boot Manager as the first to boot. When you're done, save the changes with the F10 key, and the computer will restart. After the restart, Windows will load automatically. If you noticed, the Zorin OS bootloader still shows up in my BIOS. This is the last piece of an uninstalled Linux installation that we will remove. The reason we still see it is because it's on the EFI partition of the computer. The EFI partition is hidden in the Windows system, so we will use another useful tool to show it. After Windows has loaded, search the web for Mini Tool Partition Wizard. Go to the download page and download the free version of Mini Tool Partition Wizard.
After the download is complete, open the installation file and install the free version of Mini Tool Partition Wizard. When you're done with the installation, open the mini tool partition wizard. Here we see our disk partitions again, but there is one more. Don't worry, we haven't done anything wrong. This small partition is a Microsoft Reserve Partition, or MSR. It is added to any GPT drive to help with partition management. An MSR is a reserve partition that does not receive a partition ID and cannot store user data. It is also not always visible in Windows Disk Manager. I don't know why that is, but it doesn't matter. Now right click on the EFI partition and assign a letter to it. You can choose any one from the list, but it is important to remember which one it is. When you're ready, apply the changes and close the mini tool partition wizard. Now we can see the EFI partition along with the Windows C partition. Unfortunately, Windows File Explorer can't open it, so we'll ask for help from another useful tool, and that's Explorer++. Go to the web and search for Explorer++. Download the version for your PC and unzip it. Explorer++ does not install. Just copy and paste the unzipped folder into program files. Now open the Explorer++ folder in program files and pin the Explorer++ application to the start menu. This is convenient for me, so I recommend it if you are going to use Explorer++. Run the Explorer++ application as an administrator. Now open the EFI disk, which for me is the letter D, and then open the EFI folder. In the EFI folder, we see three folders, Boot, Microsoft, and Ubuntu. This is the last folder left from the Linux installation. Note that, if you have multiple Linux distributions installed, you may have folders for each of them. For example, folders left over from Fedora, Arch Linux, and Debian installations. In this situation, your EFI folder will look like this. In order not to have unnecessary files, you should delete all, except the boot and Microsoft folders. Be careful, because deleting either folder will be fatal for the system to boot. When you're done, close Explorer++ and run the mini total partition wizard again. You can leave the EFI partition visible, but I don't recommend it because you might damage it if you're not careful. To do this, simply remove the partition letter, and it will become invisible. Now we can restart the computer to see the final result. Relaunch the boot menu immediately on reboot. Well, as you can see, only the Windows Boot Manager is displayed. Now let's start Windows. In the next video, we'll look at how to remove Windows from a dual boot computer. I hope today's video was useful and interesting for you. If so, please like, share, and subscribe to my next videos. Thank you for watching. Take care.